Hello everyone, I'm Mark Brill with Blue Oak Energy and welcome to Tech Talk Tuesday. Today I'd like to introduce you to the basics of energy modeling. So, first things first, what is energy modeling? Energy modeling is the process of taking known weather data for various sites around the country and determining how much your solar site might produce. There's a couple of free weather sites that are pretty useful from the National Renewable Energy Lab, NREL. The first is called the National Solar Radiation Database. This is a database of a few hundred sites around the country based on ground data from airports. The other is Solar Prospector, which is based on satellite data all across the country. While for your site you might have data for up to 45 years, it's important to keep in mind that your energy model is just based off of one typical year. So, any year going forward might vary as much as 5 to 10 percent from that amount. After knowing your weather data, the next step is to put this weather data into an energy model simulator. It's going to consider things like tilt, azimuth, your panel, your inverter, and various DC and AC ohmic losses, among much more. And out from that model comes your expected energy. So, aside from predicting how much revenue you might make from your solar array, this has great design implications. And I'd like to just share with you two of them. The first is shading. You can see from this example that these cherry trees might shade this solar panel. So we have some decisions to make. Should we move the trees? Should we move the modules? Or should we just accept the losses? If we put this scenario into our model, we can determine exactly how much solar energy is lost due to those trees and help make a more informed decision. Another good example is DC to AC ratio, or the ratio of how many modules there are to your inverter. This is pretty important because if you size your DC system too large, like here, where you have 700 kilowatts of DC for every 500 kilowatts of AC, on the sunniest days of the year, you'll produce more power than your inverters can handle, and your inverter will have to curtail production. However, if you're too small, like here, where you have 600 kilowatts DC for every 500 kilowatts DC, you may have paid extra money to have a larger, relatively larger inverter, and you won't use it during the majority of the year when you don't have as much sun. These are just a few examples of the many design decisions that we can use energy modeling for. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week.